Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hello everyone, Neri here from Drake Wing Gamers. If you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another episode of Don Chorus, Bjorn's Path. That's right, the bear is getting some more love in today's video. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's Lake. We're not doing Lake right now. We're doing Bjorn. There we go. There's Bjorn. Alright, guys. So please sit back and enjoy while I bring to you more of that fuzzy bear. Anyway, guys, let's get right into it, shall we? Alright, alarm chain, you're up. Alright, let's do it. Our bus has left already, so the janitor's car is the only one standing in the front parking lot. I hope that the bus driver made it to the town without any problems. I walk through the parking lot and into the woods, leaving a trail of deep paw prints in the fresh snow behind me. I inhale deeply. The air is perfectly clean and full of smells. Pines and wet moss, snow and needle-covered paths. I grew up surrounded by forests, and I always loved exploring them. Some of the smells here don't seem familiar, but I still feel at home here. The only thing I hear is the sound of the snow crunching under my paws and the slight whisper of the wind. I am just on the edge of the woods, so the forest here isn't dense, and in between the branches I can see the gray sky hanging heavy above me. It feels good to be here. Living in the city, it is easy to forget how nice it is to be surrounded by nature. I take out the instant camera I still have with me from my bag, turn it on, and, holding it in my extended arms, I point the lens at my snout. Now I have to wait for it to develop. I stash it away quickly in the bag, together with the camera, and close it. <laughs> we all know how that came out. I close my eyes and listen to the wind. I silence my thoughts and switch my attention to my surroundings. Deep breaths now. In and out. Slowly. I stand still. The wind rustles the branches, billowing off the slowly accumulating snow from them. Right now the forest is still, but everything around me is brimming with life. All the bugs in the ground, all the trees around me, Every tuft of moss and blade of grass, they all breathe together with me in a steady rhythm. I am happy where I am right now. <laughs> I open my eyes and shake off the snow from my snout. If not for the temperature, I could just stand and enjoy the peaceful atmosphere, but I'm starting to feel cold. It's still nowhere as cold as it gets in Finland in the winter. Thanks to the proximity of the sea, this part of the country is a mild climate, but it's not a temperature I would call comfortable. Something must be wrong with my finished jeans, because I much prefer warmer weather. Okay, let's see how the photo came out. Hmm, yep, it's a cutie! Cutie tiger. Well, I have to say, I am proud of this one. It might be my favorite photo of myself yet. I can't wait till he takes one of Bjorn. <laughs> Shivering a bit, I decide to keep moving. I feel war I'll feel warmer if I don't just stand in one place. Walking among the trees calmed me down, though. I feel much better now. I shake off the rest of the snow that accumulated during the short walk on my hair and on my hair and turn around, walking back to the guest house. Walking much faster now, I'm back at the guest house in maybe two minutes. Ah back in the warm inside. I woke up to one of the sofas standing in the lobby and flop onto it unceremoniously. I took some books I wanted to read with me. I'd be really happy if I had one of them with me now. But of course I left them back in my room. Only now it really hits me that I will not be able to use anything I left there including my DSLR, the books I've taken, my headphones, or even my pajamas. At least it's mildly comforting that it's only for today. And thankfully, I have my phone with me. Now that I think of it, I do have some ebooks downloaded on it, but I don't remember which ones. I take the phone out of my pocket and click the side button. The screen turns on, showing a photo of the sea that I have taken in Greece and have been using as my wallpaper ever since. Suddenly, I remember something important. I haven't yet written my mother a message that we have arrived. Oh, sorry about that, guys. My throat was a little dry. I might be living by myself now, in another country on top of that, but that just makes her more concerned about me. If I didn't write her a message, she would call me soon, and I don't feel like talking with her right now. And if I told her about the key, she would just shout at me for a while and then call every few hours to get an update. I type, t I type a quick message to her. Hi! We've arrived safely. I should do. I press send and turn off the screen, leaning back and sighing. In the corner of my eye, I see movement on the other side of the, lo in the, other side of the lobby. Turning my head in that direction, I finally notice someone sitting there on a sofa. Oh, well, if it isn't you. I don't think I recognize him. He's a tiger like me, wearing a loose-fitting black tank top. He's sitting on a sofa in a relaxed position, looking at me. There's a certain aura of nonchalance about him. He suddenly stands up and approaches me confidently, his tail making broad swings behind him as he walks. Well, hello there. Always nice meeting a fellow tiger. Name is Torolf. And you? 
I stood up before replying, feeling strangely vulnerable under his gaze. I'm Carvin. It's nice meeting you, too. Torf points to the spot on the sofa beside me. May I? Before I have a chance to reply, he sits down beside me, taking a relaxed position again. Wow, he really is forward. So, tell me about yourself. What do you study? Um, I'm from Finland, and I moved here this year. I'm studying cognitive science. Oh, a freshman. How cute. A shame we're not in the same department. I nod meekly, somewhat at a loss for words. A shame, yeah. So, what are you studying? Experimental biology, but that's not really interesting. Better tell me where I can find you, usually. Um, on the campus, I guess? I live in a dormitory, so I spend most of my time on the university ground. I live further away from the city center. I have my own flat. Hey, you can visit me sometime. You're cute, you know. He winks at me. Am I being flirted with? I, I don't think anyone has ever flirted with me before, let alone this openly. It feels... kind of nice. I don't even know how to respond to him, so instead I just stare at him. Whoa, I really empathetic sometimes. It certainly flatters me, though. He is good looking, and I, he is good looking, I have to admit. He has a nice lean body, and his clothes show it off nicely. I gulp. Suddenly another figure enters the lobby. Lake? He notices us and starts walking in our direction, and Torolf stands up to greet him. Hey, Torolf, I got you your jacket. Oh, hi, Carvin. What a surprise. You two know each other? <laughs> now we do. We've just met and chatted for a bit. Thank you, Lake. You're really invaluable. Lake passes him the jacket and the key. Oh, so they are friends. Good enough friends that Torolf sent Lake to fetch him his jacket. Frankly, I don't know much about Lake's friends. When I was visiting him, he was always either alone or with his roommate. I'm kind of surprised to see him being friends with this tiger, though. He looks older than Lake for sure. Must be a senior already. How did Lake get to know him? We were just going outside for a walk together, but I left my jacket in my room. It's been nice talking with you, Carvin. I'll catch you later, okay? Sure. Have a nice walk, you two. Thank you, Carvin. See you later. They leave through the entrance door, and so I'm left alone in the lobby. Phew! I lean back on the sofa and relax finally. I didn't even notice I got so tense. This was really something else. Torolf. What an interesting guy. He didn't really tell me much about himself, did he? Just that he studies experimental biology and has his own flat. And that he finds me cute. I blush again. Well, he is handsome, too. He told me he'll catch me later, so I should expect to see him again. I hope it won't be as awkward as our pretty one-sided conversation now was. I close my eyes and let my thoughts wander. For a moment, I thought about opening an ebook, but I don't feel like reading right now. It's just a bit too much as our hand just has happened lately. So until the end of the day, I have to find myself another room to stay in. I could always ask Miko. He for sure would agree. Things still are a bit weird between us, though, especially after a three-year gap in our friendship. I still have the whole day to ask others. I've already managed to make some new friends here. It could be a good occasion to befriend someone closer. Yeah, I don't have to make any decisions now. I'll leave that for the evening. Hmm. Well, what should I do now? Bjorn Cafeteria. I for sure don't want to spend the whole day sitting on the couch here. I haven't seen even half this guest house. I have nothing better to do anyway, so why not start exploring now? I haven't really taken a good look at the common space near the rooms, and I wasn't yet in the part of the guest house with saunas in the swimming pool. There's also a terrace on the outside, and probably some other spaces I'm not even aware of. Hmm. I'll go check out the sauna first. I'm really curious about how it looks. I think I can hear some rustling from behind the cafeteria door. My curiosity wins and I walk up to it, looking through the gap. Inside I see Bjorn sitting on a table, writing something in a notebook he's holding. He's completely focused on writing, his tongue, pe his tongue poking out from his muzzle. Even with the blep, he still looks imposing. I could go in and say hi, but he seems busy. Maybe it's not the best moment. Before I can decide, the door creaks. Before I can decide, the door creaks loudly, alerting the bear. He looks in my direction and notices me immediately. Yeah, smooth, Carvin. Carvin, hey there. I enter the cafeteria and close the door behind me, feeling somewhat embarrassed. Oh, I was just exploring the guest house when I heard some rustling here. If you wanted to be alone, then I can just continue. It's fine. Don't worry. He chuckles softly, putting down the notebook and leaning back on the table. I'd really hope it won't crack under his weight. I'm sure it wasn't designed with having bears sitting on it in mine. Um, so, what are you doing here? I went around the guest house for a while to explore it a bit, just like you. I liked it here, so I stayed. 
You know that feeling you get when you visit spaces that were always crowded but are now completely empty? I love that feeling, and this place feels just like that. I'm sure there must be a name for that, one of those, one of those you see in articles like 10 obscure emotions that actually exist or something. I nod. Yeah, I can definitely feel that too. Liminal space. Sorry? Uh, liminal space, that's what people call it. It feels frozen in time and slightly unsettling, but also familiar and oddly calm. I read that term some time ago, but in this context it no longer really has anything to do with the actual liminality. Liminality is a state that occurs at the threshold before crossing it completely but after the point of no return. It was coined by an anthropologist to describe the state of ambiguity that occurs during the transitional part of rites of passages. It sweats between the metaphorical death, leaving a certain phase behind, and entering into the new phase, changed. That's... Well, that's a lot of information and not many sentences. What did you read about that? That's part of what we learn in our course. We have some basics of anthropology. I thought cognitive science would be a bit closer to neurobiology, but maybe our fields aren't that similar after all. Ha! <laughs> probably. I look at the closed notebook on the table beside Bjorn. It's been intriguing me ever since, since I entered the room. By the way, what were you writing? I gesture the notebook and Bjorn glances back at it, looking somewhat uncomfortable with the question. Nothing much. I'm just uh, noting down some ideas. Bry. I tilt my head, looking at him quizzically. Ideas for what? I, um... I'm working on a story. A story? So are you, like, a writer? No, not a writer, definitely. So this is the first thing, so this is the first thing you're working on? N not exactly. He seems really uncomfortable with this topic. I think it'll be best if I drop it for now. So, uh, what are you doing later? Oh, if you'd be up for it, how about the game of, how about that game of snooker? Don't worry, I don't know the rules either. I've seen a few matches in my life and always wanted to try, so that sounds fine. I still have a couple things to do, but if you want to play, I'll be back in my room in maybe 15 minutes. It's room number 14. Just knock. Okay, I'll leave you for now and think about it. Later, then. See ya. I leave the cafeteria and walk around the guest house some more, the rest of the walk continuing uneventful. Hmm? What do we got? Oh, whoa. No, stop. Stop it! No, none of that. Alright, time for the snooker room. The s s snickers room. Before me is the door with the number 14 written on it, the room number that Bjorn gave me before we split up. I don't have anything to do right now anyway, so I decided to take him up on his offer and play some snooker with him. I've never played it myself, but I have seen a few matches on TV. I think I at least should remember some of the rules. Okay, here goes nothing. There's some shuffling behind the door, and after a short while, it finally opens and Bjorn's head peeks outside. Ooh. My my, aren't you a handsome fella. This time he isn't wearing his hoodie, and the t-shirt he has on shows off his rounded features. Oh, Carvin! Give me just a sec, I'll be right back. The door closes again with a loud thud, and I jump a little, startled by the abruptness of the greeting. It looks as if he didn't want me to see the inside of his room for some reason. There's more shuffling before the door finally opens again, and Bjorn walks out into the corridor. What's up, Carvin? Hi! I hope I didn't interrupt you with anything. Nah, don't worry. I was watching something. I'll finish it later. You've mentioned Snooker earlier. How about a match? Hmm. <laughs> Bjorn gives me a toothy grin. Only now I notice how thick his snout is. I'm not sure if my two paws would be enough to wrap around it. Sure, this is my idea after all. Let me grab my hoodie and we can go. Ooh, nice. Oh, God. That's good. I like that. Ah, oh, man. Love the atmosphere in this place. It's so cozy. It's so lively. Ah, oh, man. We moved to the second part of the common space where the snooker table is located. I went past it a few times before, but I never paid much attention to it. There's our table. It looks bigger than I expected. It's bigger than a pool table for sure. It's a bit intimidating. Bjorn approaches the snooker table and, fest and fetches two cues from underneath it, passing, passing one to me. I just lean mine against the wall for now. Now, you know how to play snooker? Um, other than that, we're supposed to pot, to pot, to pot, to put the colored balls with the white ball. Not really. Sorry, you'll have to teach me. I have some memories of watching snooker with my parents, but I was still a kid and I couldn't be bothered with something as trivial and interesting as, excuse me, as rules. Can't too, because I have no idea either. Wait, I'll find the rules online. He takes the phone out of his pocket. It's quite bulky and definitely does not look like a current model. Its screen cracked pretty badly. 
Either he can't afford anything better, or just doesn't care what phone he has as long as it's working. Okay, that's not as easy as I thought it would be. Have you ever played pool? Yeah, not lately, but used to play it with my dad. The rules are a bit more complicated, and here we both have to pot the same balls. Okay, so it is pot. He looks at his phone and starts reading the rules. There are 15 red balls, and 6 balls of different colors. Red ones are worth 1 point each, and other 6 are worth 2 to 7 points, black being the most valuable one. First we have to put all the red balls, alternating between them and the other 6. Doesn't matter which ones. The red ones stay in the pockets. Other colors are put back on the table. Then when all the red ones are on, but then when all the red ones are out, we have to pot the remaining balls. Yellow, green, brown, blue, pink, and black. Exactly in that order. When the player misses a shot, his turn ends. There are no special law there are no special loss conditions. The game ends when all the balls are in the pockets, or when the person who has more points than the other are still on the table. Plus what his opponent already has misses a shot. The article also says that the table is much bigger, while the balls and pockets are smaller. The queues are also longer, but that makes sense with a bigger table. Ha! Huh, I guess it's going to be a challenge. Okay, let me set up the table. Help him. Help that boy. I can help you, just tell me what to do. Okay, take all the red balls and arrange them in a triangle at this dot here, and I'll take care of the rest. He pointed to a dot on the table, passing me a triangular rack and a tray with the balls. While Bjorn puts the six balls of different colors at different points of the table, I place the rack on the table and fill it with all the red balls. After I carefully lift the rack and red balls, all, all blah. After I carefully lift the rack, the red balls are all arranged perfectly. Okay, all set. Come on, Tiger, let's play. I pick up my I pick up my cue and approach the table. Uh, which of us goes first? You can go first if you want. Break shot is not my favorite part of the match because the results of the shot are almost completely unpredictable. But it's nice of Bjorn to suggest it anyway. Nah, you can go first. Thanks. There's a gleam of excitement in his eyes as he approaches the table with a cue in his paw. He places the cue ball inside the D-shaped area between the yellow and brown ball. He leans in, laying his huge left paw on the table and using it to guide the cue as he prepares for the stroke. Finally, with a loud thud, he makes a hit, and the white ball shoots straight into the triangle of red ones, sending them flying in every direction. None of them falls into a pocket, though, and the cue ball stops at one of them. Um, and the cue ball stops at one of them near the rail. Bjorn looks at me suggestively, and I raise my brow questioningly, not really knowing what he's up to. Balls are touching. You know what that means. What? He winks at me, and I can feel the tips of my ears get hotter. Oh my god, are we really doing that old joke? It means that you have to play away from touching ball without moving it. Well, okay, you wouldn't know that because I haven't told you all the rules. There would be too many of them for you to remember at once. That's not what happens when two balls are touching. When the ball That's not what happens when the balls are touching. <laughs> he fakes a cough, trying to cover how awful his joke was. But anyway, it's your turn, Carvin. He moves away from the table and leans against the wall, holding the cue in his huge furred paw. One glance at the table tells me that the situation isn't bad. I have at least two red balls I should be able to pocket without much problems. I choose the one that is further from the pocket, but the angle is less tricky. Ha! Huh. It looks like I still remember something from playing pool with my father. I close one eye and lean in, aiming carefully, and hit it elegantly. It shoots straight into the red ball, sending it towards the pocket, which it misses by a whole few centimeters. Oh, damn it! Not your best shot, was it? Let me show you how it's done. The cue ball ended near the yellow one after my shot, so the situation on the table is much worse than it was when I was playing, but Bjorn approaches the table nonchalantly. What time is it? Okay. He doesn't want to waste time, and he leans in for a long shot into the corner pocket. He puts a lot of power into the shot, sending the cue ball in the direction of the red one. But it misses it completely. Bjorn turns in my direction with a defeated look on his face. Well, that's foul. Your turn. Oh. In the end, our playing was a complete disaster. We spent around an hour at the table before we called it quits. Bjorn managed to pot one red ball, but I only once accidentally hit the cue ball straight into the pocket. It certainly looked easier on television. In those matches I was watching, everything seemed so effortless. I have to say, my respect for snooker players rose many times. We put everything back to where we took it from, and I walked Bjorn back to his room. Why did you want to play snooker if you never played it before? Because it could be fun. Where is your adventurous spirit? You're just sore because I won against you, aren't you? Just by one point. Don't flatter yourself. We both were totally hopeless. <laughs> he let out a hearty laugh. It's nice to see him still cheerful after the game. I am feeling a bit down after missing all my shots for an hour straight. 
Ha! <laughs> that's right, but you have to start somewhere. Second at something is the first step to being good at it. You're right. Sugar is hard though, especially with the huge table and small balls, that's for sure. Yeah, I think I enjoy playing with bigger balls more. <laughs> Damn it! Born, Bjorn, what the fuck are you doing? But it was fun, wasn't it? More than I thought it would be. So, see you at dinner, yeah? Yeah, and we should repeat that sometime. He gives me a terrified look. I'm just joking, I don't think I'm ready to so utterly disgrace myself again anytime soon. Next time, we're playing table pawball. Deal. And I'm gonna pause it there. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been a new episode of Bjorn's Path for Dawn Chorus. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!